Okay, so next up are data interpretation questions. So basically data interpretation questions are any question that is asking you about information that they've given you in a chart or a graph. So they'll give you some sort of visual representation and then they'll ask you a question about it. So the trick to these is just pay attention. So you want to make sure you know which units of measurements are being used. There's important things I'm going to go ahead and just jot down here. So you want to know which units you're using. You want to know what the format is. So for instance, um, if they give you a chart that has uh, each car represents 10,000 cars in a city, let's say, you want to make sure that you know what each car represents. So just, you know, see what, what they've told you, what information. And then also if it's a graph, you want to know the axes. So what's on the Y, what's on the X, what trends are, you know, do you see, what terms, that sort of thing. So uh, one of the kind of classic data interpretation problems is the scatter plot problem. So in a scatter plot problem, they will go ahead and they will give you a, uh, a graph. So here we go. Here's my nice little graph. And a uh, scatter plot is basically when you have a bunch of points and they're not joined by a line. So for instance, uh, this will be a scatter plot. So that's kind of a nice one because it's pretty uniform. So they probably have a few more, you know, dots down here to try to kind of make it a little less obvious. The trick to the scatter plot problem is look at the answers first because uh, we all tend to want to start things at the origin. So if I were to, you know, draw in a line for this problem, which is a good idea, I might want to start at the origin and then try to go through it like that. However, you want to look at the answers first because a lot of times none of the answers will start at the origin. So if you draw in the line like I did that's green and then found the slope of it, it's going to be a lot different than if you start at whatever they tell you to. So let's say all the answers start with, uh, you know, half or one as our starting point. So let's just use one. So if we were to start with one, that's a different slope than the green line. So all you would do with any scatter plot problem is you look at the answers, um, and looking at the answers will tell you your B or your Y intercept, and then you plot it. And once you plot it, all you do is look for slope. Okay. And this is part of the test where it seems like the test makers have a little bit of fun because they'll use a lot of charts with like kind of silly looking pictures. So I mentioned they can use cars and say each car is 10,000 cars. I've even seen them use things like snowmen um, in in their charts. So let's let's go ahead and look at something like that. Well, it'll be fun. Okay. So as promised, here is a slightly silly looking, but I swear these are actually on the test um, problem. So uh, we have a chart and it has states and the number of snowmen built. And it says that each kind of sad looking snowman um, equals 10 snowmen. Now um, on the test they would add a word problem to this. So they would say something like uh, there are five schools that have a annual competition for how many snowmen the children at the school can build. Um, and each school tracks the number of snowmen, sends pictures to the other schools. In the table above, the results of the annual snowman competition are shown, um, with each snowman representing 10 total snowmen. Okay, what is the probability of a snowman being made in New York, given the table that we have? All right, so no joke, that really is an ACT problem. Occasionally they like to have fun too. Um, but it's a legitimate problem because we're being asked something that, you know, we are asked multiple times on the test. So it's just a probability problem. It just has this interesting little chart to go along with it. So uh, we know that probabilities are the desired uh, over the total. So 
If we're looking for desired over total, we would look for New York. That's our desired. So that's three of these snowmen figures or 30 snowmen. And actually, uh, you could just use one, two, three for that instead of 30. But they tell you there's 10 snowmen because they could also ask you something like, what's the total number of snowmen in Colorado? Okay, great. There's 40 of them. So you have 30 over your total. So you would say, okay, that looks like one and a half snowmen. So we've got 15 plus our 30 plus that looks like two and a half. So 25 plus 40 plus 10. Um, so then we would say, okay, we've got our 30, and then we've got to add up all of our snowmen that we just... Okay, so we've got 30 out of 120 snowmen. So now the trick is to just figure out uh, how to simplify that. So, great, we've got two zeros, so it's just 3 over 12, which is 1 over 4. So there's a 1 fourth, or, depending on how they ask it, 25% probability of your snowman being born in New York. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at the next type of problem.